The Dark Knight came out in 2008, and Heath Ledger blew everybody away as the Joker. They all, they loved it a lot. Then in 2009, Todd Phillips made The Hangover, and that was great too. Now, if I had told you back then that 10 years later, Todd Phillips would go on to make a standalone Joker movie, you would have been like, that's, that's an incredibly precise prediction to make. Why did you break into my house to tell me this? Well, now it's happened. I haven't broken into your house, but the director of Hangover and Old School and Road Trip has made a very serious movie movie about one of the most popular comic book villains of all time. Joaquin Phoenix has stepped into the role, and judging by reviews, he's done a really good job. It's a great movie. Although, to be fair, judging by a lot of other reviews, this is an awful movie with no redeeming qualities. It's, it's a little divisive. There haven't been a ton of actors who have played this character on the big screen, but whenever somebody does, it's seen as this massive undertaking. There's a certain mysticism to playing this character, almost like it's cursed. Like, oh, you play the Joker, you're gonna go a little crazy, you'd better, you'd better watch out. There's really no other comic book villain that has this kind of reputation where, oh man, this actor better take this seriously and do a ton of preparation. Like, I don't think Corey Stahl went too crazy with his prep to play Yellow Jacket and Ant-Man, you know? He was just like, all right, I'm gonna put on a suit and look greedy, does that do the trick? And Marvel was like, yeah, do whatever you want, honestly, we're gonna give you similar CGI powers to Ant-Man and that's pretty much as far as this is gonna go. So today I wanna look at what it is about this character that's given it this reputation, that makes fans obsessed with how seriously an actor is taking the role, you know? How did they prepare? Are they ever gonna be the same? How has their life been destroyed by the Joker? It's weird, cause it wasn't always like this. Let's go back a little bit, alright? Follow me, let's go. So Joker was created in 1940 by Bill Finger, Bob Kane, and Jerry Robinson. They kind of argued over credits amongst themselves, but I'm not getting involved in that, I'm crediting them all. Good job, all of you. And Joker wasn't played by an actor until the 1960s when he was portrayed by this guy Cesar Romero. And Cesar did not really take this role seriously at all. He certainly didn't seem to feel any pressure from comic book fans because he, he didn't even shave his mustache. This guy really, really liked his mustache. It was part of his signature look, so he was like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm just paint over that thing. Literally nobody's gonna notice or care. And you can't really blame him for not taking it seriously. It wasn't a serious thing. Thing. It was all super campy. I mean, Joker challenged Batman to a surfing competition one time. I don't remember that happening in The Dark Knight. So what happened? How did we get from a guy who couldn't be bothered to shave for the role of the Joker to this craze about how intense a Joker actor has to be? Enter Jack Nicholson. I'm not telling him to enter. He's not here with me. That's just an expression. There were apparently a lot of actors considered for the role in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman movie. David Bowie, Willem Dafoe, that could have been a good one. Tim Curry, he ended up playing a clown anyway. Even Robin Williams was considered. But the role went to Jack Nicholson. He had made it pretty clear nine years earlier in The Shining that he had it in him to get a little crazy, and he was one of the coolest movie stars of his generation, so this was perfect casting for the kind of Joker Tim Burton wanted to create. This Joker was kinda like a wise guy Joker, like a cool old-timey gangster kinda Joker. He was obsessed with fame and fortune and fashion. Nicholson's mix of cool and a little crazy fit the bill perfectly. The thing is though, Jack Nicholson Nicholson didn't really lose himself in the role of the Joker or anything like that. It was a take on the character that was bent in a way that was just perfect for him to play. Pretty much tailor-made to his strengths as an actor and his style and his mannerisms and hell, even his public persona if we're being honest. I don't want to go as far as to say he was playing himself, but he was kind of playing himself. So in terms of preparation for the role, he apparently didn't really prepare. In fact, Michael Keaton told David Letterman that one time when he and Jack Nicholson were sitting around around in their costumes, Jack looked over at him and said, we just gotta let the wardrobe do the acting, kid. And people loved it, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And that is what really kicked this whole thing off. For almost two decades, nobody else played the character in live action. Mark Hamill was doing some awesome stuff on the animated side of things, but it wasn't until it was announced that Heath Ledger would play the character that people even considered that somebody else could play him. And people were mad. Jack Nicholson's Joker was so iconic and synonymous with him, there was a lot of outrage. It's like if in 10 years from now they decide to cast Zac Efron as Iron Man, this good-looking kid who's known for mostly romantic comedies and stuff, suddenly 
suddenly he's playing Tony Stark. People would not be happy at all. They'd be like, no, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. I do not like change. That's not to say that Zac Efron would or wouldn't make a good Iron Man. I mean, he probably would not, I'd assume. But the point is, you can see why people were kind of up in arms about Heath Ledger playing the Joker. So people were expecting this to not be good. That's a lot of pressure, and that's a tough starting point for an actor, you have to imagine. Lucky for him, he was cast before the script was even written. So Heath Ledger had a ton of time to put into developing and prepping this character, making it as good as possible while keeping it different from the iconic version people know. This was important to Christopher Nolan too. By now, you've heard the stories about Heath Ledger locking himself up in a hotel room for a month to get himself in the right mindset and the diary he kept and all those things. And when the trailer for The Dark Knight finally dropped in December 2007 and people saw where he was taking the character, they were like, holy mackerel. That is, I did not expect that, that is incredibly wow. Good, good job. And then, of course, tragically, just a month later, Heath Ledger passed away. The official ruling was that it was an accidental overdose. Some of his co-stars on the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, which he was shooting at the time, said that Heath Ledger had some kind of, like, walking pneumonia. He was having a lot of trouble sleeping, and he was mixing up sleeping pills and prescription drugs as a desperate way of just getting some sleep. His sister, who was one of the last people to speak with him, said that he was in great spirits and showed no signs of depression or anything, although she did apparently warn him about mixing his prescriptions. So it all really seemed like just a tragic accident. But that is not really the story that the press ran with. Word broke about how much he prepared for the role, how dark it was, that he locked himself in a hotel room and the role drove him insane. The movie ended and he was still haunted by the Joker. It made him depressed. He just went too deep into the darkness of the character and it drove him mad in real life. The media took what by most actual accounts was a tragic accident and morphed it into this thing that was entangled in a comic book role that yeah, he did do a lot of prep for, but according to the people that were there, he had a great time making that movie. Derek Murray co-directed a documentary called I Am Heath Ledger and he spoke to a whole lot of people that were close to Heath even during production of The Dark Knight. He said, quote, he had the best time making it. The Joker was a role. He was enthralled by it. He was proud of it. But that version of events is a whole lot less interesting to people than the version that has him being driven to depression by the Joker. So that, that dark version is the one we mostly hear about and associate with Heath Ledger's Joker. And so, where did that leave Jared Leto when he was offered the role of the Joker years later? He has to step into this role that the first time around, not counting Cesar Romero, was played iconically by Jack Nicholson. And the time after that was played iconically again by Heath Ledger. I mean, that's that's nuts. That's like if you start at an IT job and your boss is like, hey, no pressure, but the guy who had this job before you was Steve Jobs and the guy before him was Bill Gates. So good luck, buddy. All eyes were on Jared Leto and most of those eyes were not happy. So he goes all into the character in his own way. What choice did he have? He apparently never broke character on set throughout filming. He met with real life psychopaths. He sent his star disgusting gifts as as the Joker, he fully committed to it because after the last two interpretations of the role, people would not settle for anything less. Now, unfortunately for him, the character went in a direction that people didn't like very much at all. Certain decisions were made that uh, were, you know, questionable. I can't say that I like the ha 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 tattoos nor the, the damaged tattoo. Not great. But Jared Leto definitely felt that pressure and definitely put a lot of work into preparing for the role, which after two legendary incarnations and a lot of dramatization from the press has taken on this kind of prestige. So now, here we are with Mr. Phoenix. Of course, the question on people's minds is, well, well, how did he prepare for the role? That What did he do? When we saw first images of him as the character, it was clear that he had lost a ton of weight. People were like, oh boy, another actor diving into the dark, dark role. Oh man, this he's gonna lose his mind. It already looks like he's gonna be scarred for life. This this is gonna be nuts, strap in. Except it's not, it's not that nuts, guys. Don't get me wrong, he lost 52 pounds to play the character
character, and that is super impressive dedication. But he's an actor that's played around with his weight before, and he's far from being the only one to do that. And apparently, he actually wanted the Joker to be fat. Todd Phillips is the one who asked for a super thin version. Phoenix also read some books about political assassinations, and he studied videos of people suffering from pathological laughter. That's like, fairly standard prep by Hollywood standards. An actor prepares. Literally, that's the name of a fundamental book on acting. He did what an actor is supposed to do. And sure, he apparently stormed off of set several times, but other than that, he's been pretty vocal about enjoying the process of filming Joker and whatnot. Still, people are fascinated with digging for dirt on what effect the role must have had on him. What dark stories from the set are we missing out on? Is he gonna be scarred for life? There's just this whole narrative around playing the Joker that stemmed from the passing of Heath Ledger and the way that that was presented to everybody. People love the Joker, and that's great, but I don't think we need to be putting this kind of pressure on the actors that play the character, that they're supposed to go super method with it, and if they don't check into a psych ward after production, well then clearly they haven't done a good job. So I say everybody just relax a little bit, you know? Let's, let's put a smile on that face, except in like a, in a happy, in an actual happy way. Thanks for watching that video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Do you think too much pressure is being put on actors who play the Joker? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos.